to your next lesson in Swift for Beginners. In the last video, we discussed types, and in today's video, we will be picking up exactly where we left off, and we're going to be talking about functions and parameters. So let's start by getting rid of everything that we had done for our last lesson. Uh, make sure you leave the import foundation up here. And let's just notate this as funks and parameters. So what is a function? So a function is a set of instructions or a block of code, which is signified into a group by a function name. Uh, a function can take variables inbound and the function can also return a variable. So if you recall, we talked about variables um, and they can encapsulate pieces of data. So when we have a function, let's say that um, adds two numbers together, we can send into the function those two numbers and maybe the function can spit back out to us the sum of those numbers. So let's create a basic function. So to create a function in Swift, you use the keyword func, you provide the name of the function. So let's say my first function, you put parentheses and you put curly braces and you open up a block like so. And when you want to add parameters and parameters are the thing that the variables that you are sending into the function, you put them in the parentheses. So this is what a basic function looks like at its absolute core basic foundation. Now, what if we want to have a function that takes in two parameters, two variables, and adds them together and then returns the sum of them? Now, this is where our discussion of types is very important. So let's say we create a function and we say func add two numbers and we open up this and do this. So now I'm, I mentioned that the actual parameters go in the parentheses and let's call our, so before even I, before I even get to what we're going to call our parameters, a parameter is an instance of a inbound variable and you can give a parameter and rather you have to give a parameter a name and a type similar to a variable. So we're going to say our two parameters are going to be a and b. So a is going to be a type of int and b is also going to be a type of int. So uh, if you haven't noticed already, the syntax, the way that this is written out is very similar to how a variable would be defined. Um, and to signify that this function will add these two together and have something to return, uh, in other words, a return value, before this open and curly brace, we're going to come here and do a hyphen, the greater than sign, and the type that we expect this function to return, which will be an int in this case. So this is a function that takes in two parameters of type int and int and returns an int. And this is complaining right now because we're not returning anything in here, but in the function signature, we have said this function should be returning an int. So to, to access these two variables in this function, we refer to them by a and b, which is why we give them a name. So what we want to actually do in here is we want to return a plus b. So a and b, because we know those are ints, because we've explicitly said they should be ints, we can say a and b, we want to return the sum, and we're just going to return the res whatever a and b sums up to. Now what we could also do is do something like var sum equals a plus b, and then do a return of sum. Um, but you know, keeping things a little more shorthand and a little more uh, legible, we're just going to do return a plus b. Now how the heck do you call this function? Now that we have this function, imagine if we had two uh, numbers, let's say we have var x is 3, and var y is, let's make a small number to start off with to exemplify this. We can say, let sum equals add two numbers, and notice it auto-completed it for us, and it wants something for a and b. And in here, we can pass in x and y. And if we go over to the right here, you'll see that we passed in these two things, and this sum comes back as this because the instructions that we put in our function of what the function should do is basically take a and b add them up and return them so the sum is the sum of these two things and now to prove that it really works 
we can add some astronomical number here and here um, well okay the int, int is going to yell at us because int has a max capacity of size but let's make it something bigger that it won't yell at us about um, so let's take that number and we should sum it up and get the result back and like so we get the result back and this sum um, is correct so that's the basics of a function now having our understanding of types we can add uh, endless number of parameters to a function and we can have any type of return value from the function now of course the function may or may not have a return value it doesn't have to so let's do a couple more examples now we have this we have this uh, function that does uh, that sums up two numbers right what if we want to take this sum and we want to find um, what the exponent would be rather we want to find what the value would be when we raise this number to let's say itself right so if we want to do this times this so sum times sum so this number raised to the power of two right so we're squaring it so we can make a function let's make it up here to organize this let's make a function called square number again it takes in a which is just the name that I gave it and something important to know is you want to name your variables to be somewhat understandable so a and b are not the best of examples but let's call this number and it's gonna be an int and this will return an int and we're gonna say return number times number and if you're not aware this is the this is uh, the multiplication um, keyword in most programming languages so that's what the star is used for and what we want to do here is fix this which is why it's yelling at us in terms of uh, case sensitivity and yeah so what we're gonna do is we're gonna say let squared sum equals our function and we're gonna pass in sum and um, maybe I should have mentioned this a little earlier on but to call a function you put the function name and then parentheses and if there's parameters generally it'll autocomplete for you but the parameters go in exactly the way that you wrote them out up here so let's say we had a function that just got called like let's say we have an application where we want to log like an analytic for something um, let's say the user tapped on a button let's say we have log as a function and there's no parameters and no return to call it we can just do this just log and notice it highlights it for us so let's do one more example and I think we can wrap up after that um, let's have a function which takes in a number and it'll return true or false it'll return true if the number is even and it'll return false if the number is odd so we're gonna have a function here is even it's gonna take in a number it's gonna return a bool and by default everything is gonna return false and before we do this we're gonna check if this number is even if it is even we will return true before it gets to the bottom of the function and I'll, I'll explain a little bit of what uh, you know I just mentioned of what it means by return before you get to the bottom of the function um, with this example so let's not worry about this if but we're, we're gonna be talking about this conditional later on in, in another lesson but we're gonna be basically checking if number percent two equals equals zero in other words if it's even if two can be divided into it return to true so what do we what do we have going on here so the first thing you'll notice is we have two return statements so what the absolute heck is going on so in a function when you return if it expects a return type if you hit a return statement before you get to the bottom of the function this line of code will never execute because you already called return if this if this condition matched up and thus the function is like okay I'm done whoever called me here's your result I'm good to go and it'll never come down here so you might find yourself in a couple cases where you find multiple return statements in one function this if condition is basically saying if whatever number we have here this parameter if it if two can be divided into it evenly 
yielding a remainder of zero. That's what this percent means. This is a modulo operator that we'll discuss more in depth in the latter uh, lesson. Return true. Um, so let's test this out. So we're going to say let results equals is even. And let's put in four. We should get true, hopefully. So we get true here, which is awesome. Well, let's call this one more time. Let's change this to result one. And um, I may or may not have mentioned, hopefully I have, but constants and variables and anything you're making should be uniquely named. Uh, if something is named the same thing, Swift is going to not understand which one you mean. Thus, you need to have unique names. But let's pass in an odd number here. Let's go with seven. And it should say false, which it does. Beautiful. Let's do one more with a larger number. Let's do 720. And of course, it should come back as true because it really is even. Awesome. So that's functions at a glance. Uh, we've seen what a function is, how to call a function, what a parameter is, how to create a parameter, how a function can return something, um, how to signify that it will be returning this type of type, how you can have multiple return statements, and that's about it. Um, I really hope you guys grasped functions in general and what they are. They are really the uh, building blocks uh, similar to variables and constants of programming in general, especially with Swift. Um, pieces of code are organized into functions. You want to have functions be very modular so you can reuse them over and over. And an example of that is, let's say you want to uh, multiply two numbers. Instead of writing that multiplication formula in a variety of places in your code, you want to just have one function for it. And that'll take care of it for you. So yeah, I hope you guys found this helpful. Um, leave some comments below, leave a like, uh, let's get some discussions going if you need any clarity or help and I will see you guys in the next lesson.